united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation by KSCE Channel 38 Christian Television. And now, United with Christ. Welcome to Life Christian TV. I am Pastor Alan Stoddard from Calvary Chapel Ruidoso, and this is Pastor Jacob McCaw, who has been on the show, I think about three weeks ago, here with us at United with Christ. And we're glad you're tuning in. We've got a, a show today where I'm excited about it. We're gonna talk about spiritual renewal, spiritual revival, that's been our theme. And then we place some things underneath that uh, and today we're going to talk about spiritual formation, specifically in investing in people in one-on-one -on -one discipleship, of course. But we're going to bring back up the idea of discipling millennials and uh, what does it look like to disciple people and how can we do this in our local churches, which is a <coughs> dire need. I think in some form or fashion, I've been hammering that pretty good each week. If you have a prayer request, call in 915-532-8518. We would love to pray for you. And if you have any questions about disciple making and revival and local church leadership, we would love to answer those for you. So call in on the line. I want to read a portion of scripture for us and then um, move us on in prayer and then we'll jump in. So the Lord said this, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea and the uttermost parts of the world when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Lord, we thank you for Acts 1-8. We pray your blessing on us. Thank you for what you're doing in this portion of our country. We pray, Lord, you'll pour out your spirit and empower us to be the body of Christ that you need, you want us to be, that revival and spiritual awakening might come asking in Jesus' name. Amen, everybody. Amen. Amen. Well, if you're tuning in, and let me start, I usually finish with it, but I want to start today with the fact that if you have never asked Christ to be your Savior, uh, we would, of course, want you to do that. If you have any questions, we have someone here that would love to answer questions, explain the gospel to you, and also to pray with you and help you build an altar to receive Christ as your Savior. If that is you, we would love for you to call in and do that. I usually share that at the end, but I thought, <clears throat> let's start off today with that. And so, like, what would we do is the conversation. Jacob, what would we do with a person who comes and makes a commitment to Christ? This person, let's say, follows Christ in baptism somewhere in the first year or month, whatever it is, it varies by person. For sure. Um, what would we do with that person after? So, like, I was talking with Jake, and uh, we were laughing about how I was saying these two things caught and taught okay i'm not talking about a cot that you lay on that's what I and i'm not talking, talking about, about a little tot that would walk up on us and, and like we would a, pat like him on the head tot? Like a tater tot we're talking about discipleship disciple making and i want to use a, a phrase we haven't used before on the show is spiritual formation and I, I wanted to jump in in a minute on that there's a couple of things that jesus did in mark 3 and this is in the synoptics I'm just going to read a portion of it. Mark 3, 13. It says this, when he, Jesus, when he went up on the mountain and called to him those whom he desired, and they came to him, and he appointed the 12 whom he also named apostles. So they had been disciples. And now he's going to elevate them to leadership, which is to be sent on mission. That's apostles. So he appoints 12 and, and the purpose of that is that they might be with him. So I, I like to stop there and say Jesus' purpose was for discipleship. Some of it's taught, as in teaching. Right. And some of it is caught, <laughs> let's say, like we did over the weekend with some guys around the fire barrel with right. no agenda other than let's just see what happens. The passion is past. Yes. <laughs> so he, he appoints them. So he singles them out that they might, the purpose clause is that they might be with him. Um, for what purpose? 
for this purpose, that he might send them out to preach, number one, and then secondly, to have authority to cast out demons. Daryl Eldridge, the president of Rockbridge Seminary, he is fond of saying, we need, wherever a believer goes, we should be dismantling hell. Right. And so we, I love that phrase. It's, yeah. I see the fire hose Epic. picture of yeah. on the outside, and we're going to try to get For all sure. the people we can in. Okay, so questions, Jacob. How, if you're thinking as a millennial about caught, disciple making is caught, but it's also taught. What is your response to that? How, how would you advise people to reach specifically millennials? It'll bleed over into other people. But how do millennials desire receptivity in disciple making? So the, the millennial generation, we're, we're very opinionated, sometimes irritatingly opinionated. Um, I can say that as a millennial. Um, and we, we're, we're, we tend to just, be, as a generation, be very good at saying, okay, this is what I believe. You can believe what you believe. That's fine. But don't impress what you're thinking on me. And um, that's, uh, that makes it difficult to disciple millennials, to reach millennials, because it's like, okay, yeah, I'm, I respect what you believe. You should respect what I believe, and we should just not talk about it. That's, that's the way it goes a lot, a lot of times. That's the, at least the experience that I've had. Um, and so that's why this whole concept of spiritual formation is very important. Um, a definition of, uh, of that phrase that I heard as, uh, from Pastor Jim Bergen of Flatirons Church in Colorado, he says that um, spiritual formation is really just taking the old ideas about Jesus, these, these ideas that you've grown up with, whatever's happened in your life that's led you to this point, the things that you believe about Jesus, these ideas that you have, it's spiritual formation is you taking those things and you're letting go of them and you're grasping a hold of these new ideas, these better ideas of who Jesus actually is and of what, um, of what he actually, uh, care, he cares about you, he loves you, those kinds of things. And so that's why it's important for this whole discipleship thing that we're talking about, this one-on-one -on -one discipleship to take place with new believers is so that they can let go of their old ideas about Jesus and grasp these new ones. But with millennials, that can be difficult because... Yeah, what's the why? Because it's, it's, it's just simply the fact that most millennials, they just, they just want to believe what, they, what they're going to believe and they don't really want to have to... They don't want to have to be told that they're wrong, you know? And not that, not that anybody... How do you get into a conversation then that allows that conversation to happen? There's, right. there's, there's a pre... You can't just jump in and go, hey, right. you're wrong. Absolutely what not. What do we do? No one's going to... I won't listen to you <laughs> right. if you told me that. It's all about relationship. It's about coffee shops. It's about... Uh, food. Food. It's about getting a hammock and going, setting up between some trees and chilling with, some, with well, more coffee. Millennials and coffee. Millennials and coffee. So, so one of the things in, the, in catching it, mm -hmm. because disciple making is caught. Jesus hung out with them. He wanted them not for cl just class. And I'm not against classes. Okay, right. classes right. are good. And I do classes. <clears throat> they're fine. But there is a point in this where it is also mm -hmm. not just taught in content, right. but it's caught in relationship. Jesus took three years and he handpicked these guys and, and other, and right. there were gals involved and, and that they might be with him. Yeah. I've heard it, I've heard it said, this, this might be a cliche saying, I'm not, I'm not certain, maybe some of you have heard it, but it's the idea that nobody cares what you know until they know that you care. No, that's right. And it's, and that, that's, that's not just for millennials, that's a, just a staple concept for discipleship just in general is the idea that if somebody doesn't really believe that you are uh, truly thinking about their well-being, truly caring about them, and it doesn't matter what you say because nobody cares. That, in particular, is a very good way of reaching Muslims as, as a culture, is the idea of making friends, showing them that you care about them specifically, and at that point they open up to you and allow you to speak into their life of what you believe. And the same works, same works for millennials. It's a similar situation. Four years ago, I probably had very little friends that were outside of the Christian circle. Mm -hmm. I had no friends that were, all of my friends were clean, they were Christian, nothing against that, 
But about four years ago, God brought one of the biggest sinners in town to our church <laughs> and he started to introduce us to other things and, and people and, and we made some connections. It was all good. It was great. And a lot of times pastors are way too entrenched in their offices. Sometimes we just need to get out of the office, go sit in Barnes and Nobles, develop sure. some relationships. It's caught. It's, and, and the reason why I say that is because we have a program course mentality of disciple making. Right. And so what happens is you think, okay, let's go through the eight week course. Okay, go through the eight week course and that's it. Spiritual formation, let's probe that for a moment. So when we think of spiritual formation, um, you and I've heard you talk about this. So, so the way that I'm doing my walk with God right now, if I were to say the way I do Bible is I have been, when I wake up in the morning, I get my phone, which I think I would like, I got to look this up, find some statistics on how people do their phones in the morning. I think people grab their phones, want to wake up. It's a computer it, easily it, it, at your it hand. Helps, it helps get my eyes open. I get rid of all the notifications and everything. It helps me actually like wake up wake up yeah. okay so what i was doing is i was getting on my phone and i was surfing facebook checking some email just kind of sauntering through my phone right. and one morning god was just impressed on me by the spirit he said hey instead of checking the timelines of everybody else and social media why don't you check my timeline <laughs> and i thought okay well i'm gonna wake up first god i'm gonna wake up so i, right. I was surfing i realized wait a minute I'm spending 20 to 30 minutes surfing. By the time I get to the Bible, I had very little time. I mean, I had some time and you know, I'm a pastor. Skip so the verse of the day and then leave. Bi yeah, Bible <laughs> is going on with pastors right. all day long. It should be in some form or fashion. Right. And, and I realized it was good for me. So now I, when I open my phone in the morning, I'm, I'm reading through the Bible. I have a whole plan for this thing, a two-year plan where I'm picking whatever the Spirit wants me to read in a book. Right. So I finished Proverbs today, and I'm going to jump to Hebrews tomorrow, maybe today. Hebrews has all the answers. So, so That's my favorite My book. point is this. My point is this. Um, what, I think what we've said in, in, in Western Christianity is that if you don't get this quiet time practice right, and I'm all about getting it right, I think right. I challenge anybody <laughs> these days, read your Bible first. Right. You can read your Bible in the first seven minutes when you're waking up. Some mornings I'm not all the way awake, but I get awake and it extends into more. Sometimes it doesn't, I've got an appointment. But my point, I'm, I'm blabbing to my point. My <laughs> point is this, is, um, is, is sometimes we have to get our, spiritual start of the day it right. has to be different than just getting a check block mentality to a quiet time right. does that just, make sense yeah I, I read my six verses now i'm good it's it's spiritual formation says the scriptures are part of my day all day right the scriptures are who i am it's what i'm thinking about if i don't read you know a, a chapter every morning or something like that it's 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 just the idea that you're at least thinking about it during the day. You're at least asking God what he's thinking. Right. And uh, a lot of times we can put too much emphasis on having like a 6.30 a.m. You know, quiet time where I get up and I read five chapters and then I read something from A.W. Tozer and then now I can go. Like it's, it, it can become almost, you can become judgmental of yourself. Uh, but it's just, it's not, it doesn't have to be that complicated. God just yes. wants to talk to you. Yes, and we are not saying, let me clarify, we're not saying that you should not do that. Right. No, not at all. It's, what it's we're great. saying is <clears throat> we are spiritually formed by more experiences in the Christian walk right. than just that. Right. Uh, if most Christians would take the first 10 minutes of their day and just read the Bible with clarity, and, you know, whether it's one verse, whether it's 20 verses, yeah. the rest of your spiritual formation in that day will be different. But, but check this out. So like I used to, there has to be a plan B. So I used to think, uh, I had to get up before I went to uh, Bible college and seminary. I thought, okay, I'm going to get my act together. So I was in the army. So I'd wake up at four 30 in the morning to read my Bible. And I, I would end up leaving at 5 a.m. to go to Fort Campbell, Kentucky right. to be there at five 30 
to wake up soldiers and be in formation outside at six for physical training. Right. Well, I, I would wake up at 4.30, I'd be sitting there trying to read and I wasn't used to reading at 4.30 and I would find myself <laughs> falling asleep. Falling back asleep. And then I felt guilty about it. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, God is really disappointed in me. And then I realized, wait a minute, instead of doing that, why don't I do it in the car? And here's what I did. I started listening for 20 or 30 minutes right. on the drive. I lived 20 mm -hmm. minutes from Fort Campbell at that time of day. I started listening to uh, the radio Bible class mm -hmm. with Mark DeHaan, Haddon Robinson, and Alice Matthews, still on today, and then Chuck Smith. Right. And so I, w I <laughs> took that 30 minutes when I knew I was awake. Yep. And that became one of the mo that became my little Bible study class. Right. All by my, me, God, in a car. And I, and I think that that's... I think it's really important to bring things like that up in one-on-one -on -one discipleship so that the person who just got saved doesn't think, oh, I have to fall into a legalistic pattern yes. to continue. It's really important to be the, uh, the global creative pastor for Hillsong Church. Her name is uh, Cass Langton. In a podcast I was listening to where she, where she was uh, talking about some things, she said, these are her exact words, I'm pretty good at reading my Bible every day. And I can't tell you how comforting that was to me that the global creative pastor for a giant church like Hillsong says, I'm pretty good at reading my Bible every day. Like, and, I, and I didn't right. take that to mean that she's not like focused, that she's not you know, committed, that she doesn't you know, do her job well or anything like that. It was just, oh, she's a real human being who sometimes wakes up late, has to get her coffee and go, and she figures it out after that. I don't know. It's really important to be real. And I think that's why hearing because your story you, of... You will get demoralized. Exactly. Hearing well, the story of how you transformed your quiet time from a 4.30 snooze fest into a drive with Jesus. I mean, think about that's this. That's great. We have, <laughs> we have at our disposal smartphones, digital devices, and right. so forth. And there's plenty of Christian radio and Christian TV still. Okay. Sure. So, so when we think about spiritual formation, um, and there's a lot of tools here. And so... I remember there was a season in my wife's life where she was more of a, a night owl. You're a night owl. That is for sure. I'm a morning guy. Um, I am not. So if we sit down no. with people and say this spiritual formation in your life has to go down this way mm -hmm. in this box. Right. Well, here's the problem. I'm When we do that, we're... In most churches, we're not even sitting down telling people that. They kind of hear it, and it's an expectation of, oh, man, i got to give God in a whole hour or 45 minutes to 30 right. minutes in the morning. I'm not against that. We should. Um, we should walk with him all day long, but we should. However, that new guy, he, that is just, not, you, we have to make it smaller, yeah. bite-sized well, chunks. And it can be daunting. A new believer may not have experience with the Bible, with the language the Bible uses, the the images, those kinds of things, they might have trouble understanding it. And so reading the Bible for an hour, they're just sitting there reading, I don't know, Shakespeare almost, and they have no idea what it's saying just because right. they're new. And the it's, it's better to just figure out a way to make sure that they're getting content that they can understand. And the Holy Spirit's going to do that, obviously. It's not our job to make sure everyone understands everything. It's That's the Holy Spirit's job. Right. But as leaders in churches, as believers, as people who are discipling other people, it's our job to be listening to the Spirit and hear, okay, this is how we should treat these people. This is how we should work with them. Let's not make them read five chapters of Leviticus in the morning. <laughs> right, right. I, want, I, I would do that. I love Leviticus. I but. once took an <clears throat> Old Testament class at 7 a.m., and I thought, oh, my gosh, why did I do this? And I took it with a, a great <laughs> professor, uh, Dr. Harry Hunt. We called mm -hmm. him Hatchet Harry Hunt. Hatchet Harry Hunt. I mean, it was the first half of the Old Testament at 7 a.m. I'm just not awake <laughs> at 7 at that point. I need coffee. Yeah. My wife took a three-hour Romans class that started at 7.30 a.m. Oh, man, that's deep at, at 7. Yeah. And that teacher is a great teacher, but I'm not certain anybody. I'm not certain even Jesus wants to handle that much. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we're talking spiritual formation because we think with revival and church life and Great Commission things, we must be healthy and we must have a, a kind of a real life platform for telling people how to walk with God. 
And so you got to have a plan B. If plan A doesn't go right, you woke up late, okay? You you didn't hear the alarm and you slept in a little extra. Right. You got to know how to get in the car or get to work right. and to know that spiritual formation is not a one-time thing. Absolutely. It spiritual is an all-day thing. 60 years maybe. It might be 60 years before you get it right or even get close to getting it right. But that's okay. That's it's a lifelong process. Jesus Do wants to be with us the whole time. Doctrinally, that would be sanctification, right. where we become <laughs> saved, salvation, but our salvation, justification, regeneration, and then there's sanctification, glorification is ultimately when we will meet the Lord. Um, but sanctification is the spiritual formation and practices and experiences right. that, that shape us to be ambassadors for Christ right. and ready for revival and spiritual awakening when it comes. Again, the idea of getting rid of those old ideas and embracing the new better ones. Yes, I think we, well, I, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, um, we're making this into a, and there is a part of this where this is true. You section off eight weeks of your life, right. commit to this study, <clears throat> and that is good. That's how you grow. The problem becomes the guy graduates from eight weeks of study of whatever it is, and mm -hmm. there's something still missing. Well, it's supposed to be. You're not supposed to get it all in the eight-week program. You're not done. Yeah. We, we, get it with, we get it with a life of walking with God. Here's what I say to people. You, I'll ask them. People come in for counseling or something, and I'll say, okay, what's the problem? They'll tell me the problem, and I'll say, are you a Christian? Yes. Okay. And then I'll ask them, how's your Bible? You've had me, at, right. I've asked, you know me, I'm going to ask people, how's your Bible? And they'll, if they pause, I'm going, okay, you're not reading your Bible, right? Okay, no. Okay, you're only one Bible reading away from revival in your life. It's <laughs> one, not, one verse away from hearing from God. Sit down by yourself somewhere and get back engaged with God in prayer. And let's throw in prayer. I mean, Bible and prayer are the two wings of the plane. Right. So I remember with prayer, that, that um, what does the Bible say? The Bible says that we should pray all the time. Right. We should also have a closet, Jesus said, so private. And we should also have a community place of prayer. Right. And when we pray all the time, I mean, you've got to pray. We're in El Paso. You better right. learn how to pray because you're going to drive in traffic here, man. It's crazy. <laughs> um, Sure. We need to be praying all the time, all the time. not well, not some language of um, King James. Right, right. God, I'm pretty sure God doesn't even like that. Um, the, the whole prayer thing, it's it's like a relationship in, like between human beings. If you have a best friend, but you never speak to them, can you actually define them as your best friend? If you never communicate with them, if you never spend time with them, you can't you can't actually say or expect anybody to believe that you're best friends with this person. So like I could think, I could, I could wish that I was best friends with Captain America, but, well first off he's not real, but second off, if he was and I never spent time with him or I never got to meet him or anything like that, I can't actually say that I'm best friends with him because we have no relationship. Right. And that's part of the spiritual formation. If you're not spending time with God, Yeah, you can't and that say involves that listening to. Right. A part of spiritual formation in the word and in prayer is not just us reading and speaking to God, but it's being quiet and allowing those two things, right. the word and <clears throat> prayer, God has a way of speaking back into us right. um, what he wants us to get from what he's already said uh, in right. his word. He promises you, he will draw near to you. You said a couple of things uh, that are uh, totally millennial. Um, you said Jesus. I don't even think Jesus would want to mess with the King James Bible. And I know what you mean by that. No, I meant you're the language, not the Bible. Yes, I know what you're saying. Yeah, you're being a millennial and you're making a point, right. which makes me think about your podcast. Tell us about your podcast. So uh, my good friend Dana Haynes and I, we have a podcast up. It's on iTunes. Um, and we call it the Millennial New King James Version. It's not a version of the Bible. It's not, that's not, that's not what we're talking about. It's a joke. Um, it's just the podcast stemmed from our idea of when we were teaching youth group, we would read a section of scripture and ask the kids, okay, what did that just say? And these teenagers, they couldn't tell us what it meant. They couldn't tell us what it said. They had no idea. And so we started not changing what the Bible was actually saying, not changing the story, not changing the meaning, anything like that, but changing the language 
and all of a sudden these kids could retain the information. And so we started a podcast just recently. There's only about four episodes up. If you uh, go on iTunes and search the MNKJV, it'll show up. And basically it's Dana and I reading and teaching scripture using words that we can all understand. Yeah, cool. So yeah. check that out. Um, we're talking about spiritual formation, which can get a little deep. <laughs> I remember when I went to Bible college, it was required to go to a spiritual formation group hmm. uh, because they wanted it to be accountable. Uh, not not a guilt-based thing, but basically, sure. hey, how are you walking with God? For sure. Um, and you could fill in the blank, and there wasn't exactly a list of check blocks you had to keep. Now, this is why this is important today, because if we're going to see revival and spiritual awakening come from the Southwest, which is we've which is what we've been teaching on the program here for the last eight weeks, is that we need to be thinking about how we can walk with God in spiritual uh, formation and also help other people walk with God. Right. So, so we hope this show has been a blessing to you today. We hope it, you'll tune back in next week. We look forward to seeing you guys again in the days ahead. Thank you, Jacob McCall, my brother in the Lord, for being with us again. And uh, pray for the station, Live Christian TV, that God will continue to use us in a big way. Trust Jesus. Absolutely. We love you guys. We'll see you uh, next week.